By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are playing a casual game of X points in our local pub, the Twee Klaveren in Amsterdam. I'm playing against Jurian, and he has brought a pretty cool deck to the table. It is a budget version of the deck. So he's tried to build the deck and X points, and that means you've got to think of this list. You have to keep that in the back of your mind. You cannot spend more than 10 points, right? And also, he's tried to build it with budget in mind. So I believe it doesn't even have any dual lands in this deck. So it, it's just... It's ridiculous, but it's also cool, and I'm really looking forward to show you this deck. And he is taking on my deck, Spy Stone. So Spy Stone is this deck built around Orcish Spy and Millstone, and also Arborea. So it's really a uh, combat, sorry, combat, a combo. That's what I'm trying to say, combo prison deck, where I try to mill my opponent to death. And I've got some other tricks, but more about that in the deck deck section of this video. Now before I start with the deck deck I would just like to point out that as always you can also choose to skip this maybe check it out after the match. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG game so if you click on there it'll take you straight to the games and in that same description below you will also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can find that on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, and that is a great way to support the channel. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron of the show, just like Yurian actually also is a patron of the show. Thank you for your support, Yurian. So if you also want to become a patron and perhaps even play a game against me or make an episode together, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And for now, we are going to continue with, with the deck decks. I'm going to start with uh, the deck Spy Stone. Let's have a look. And here we see my deck, Spy Stones. I'm really excited to show you uh, this deck because it's just, it's funny. I'm hoping that it's going to work. These games could take long with this deck. You know, let me explain what I want to do. So I've got Millstone and Orcish Spy in this deck. Here you can see the three main cards that the deck kind of revolves around. So if I've got Millstone in play, you know, Millstone is an artifact for two, two and tap, take the top two cards from target player's library and put them in target player's graveyard. So I'm going to try to mill my opponent. But I only want to mill away the right component. So I basically want to give him maybe only Lance, you know, make sure he's land flooded. Or if he's very light on Lance, make sure that he doesn't find any Lance to play out his spell. So it depends on, you know, whatever's happening in the game, what kind of cards I want him to have. Now, how can I do that? I can do that by using Orcish Spy. So Orcish Spy is a 1-1 from Fallen Empires. Tap and look at the top three cards of target player's library. Put them back in the same order. So you cannot do anything, but you can just look at the top three cards. Now, um, so I want to use my Orcish Spy to look at the top three cards of my opponent's library and then kind of decide, do I want him to draw that top card or do I want him to draw the third card, right? Because that's kind of the thing I can manipulate. So I can millstone away the top two cards if I think they're too dangerous and too good for my opponent to have. And of course, the more Orcish Spies I have, the more millstones I have, the more manipulating I can do. So I can make sure that my opponent is not finding anything useful. And then if he, you know... If it's early game and he manages to get some creatures on the board, that could be an issue with this type of deck. So that's why I'm also playing with Arborea. So Arborea is two green and two for this enchant world that says if a player does not cast a spell or put a card into play in his or her turn, no creatures may attack uh, that player until after his or her next turn. So this goes really well with the millstone plan, right? I don't want to play out anything. I just want to mill my opponent to death or, you know, control my opponent with Orcish by a Millstone and slowly grind away and win the game by milling him. Now, there are a few other ways to kind of win the game. Uh, I am playing, for example, with Channel Fireball and I'm also playing with two Ivory Towers. So hopefully the Ivory Towers can give me a lot of life. Then, or Well, a lot. I don't even need a lot. Just a little bit of life. And then if I have more life than my opponent, I can play my Channel Fireball and win the game. Now, um, I'm also playing with Mirror Universe together with Sylvan Library. This is a really nice combination because for Sil with Sylvan, I can draw extra cards, but I have to pay four life every time I do it, right? And I can do that twice every turn. So that's eight life a turn that I can lose. So if I have Mirror Universe on board with Arborea so he cannot attack me, I'm just going to draw a lot of extra cards. I'm going to get really low on my life total. Then I'm going to switch life and I can finish him off with a lightning bolt. So that's also one of the ways to win the game. So, you know, there are different ways to kind of defeat my opponent. The weak uh, weakness of this deck, of course, is 
it's gonna take a long um, I need to find the right pieces the pieces need to stay on board which is really dif difficult so I need to really use my counter spells the right way um, if my opponent's gonna go too fast it's gonna be difficult you know, if he finds a way to get rid of Arborea at key moments, it's going to be difficult. So there are a lot of ifs and buts, but I like it and I want to try it and I want to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, I want to tweak it and I want to see if, if I can make it work better. You know, that's that's a simple story of this deck, Spy Stone. If you have any suggestions for me, feel free to uh, to leave a comment in the comment section below. I love to read your feedback. And I know that a lot of people have already tried to tinker with Orcish Spy and Millstone with Arborea and you know that's that's where the challenge is right you want to see can I make these cards work can I make them work together or can I maybe make them work separately whatever but it is challenging right and and I, I like a challenge I like a brew challenge so uh this is my deck and maybe it's also interesting to discuss the uh the cards with points on them I believe it's Ancestral Recall uh Demonic Tutor and Wheel of Fortune those are the cards that have points on them in uh, in this deck so this is my deck now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent and here we see the deck of my opponent Yurian. so this is the deck on a budget and i really really like this stuff i love it when people say you know what i don't have the duels i don't have the mocks and all those nonsense you know i don't have the, the the power cheat cards but i'm still gonna try to make this work i think it's really cool so the deck on a budget and look at the mana base maybe it's a good thing to start there because usually the deck is filled with dual lands right but here we just see a lot of basics four plains four islands four mountains three forests and of course we see then four city of brasses which i guess are really important we also see a strip mine three Mishra's Factory, so he's still playing with the factories despite the fact that he has that wonky mana base. And the reason I'm saying that is because, of course, uh, you know, your, your Mishra's Factory is a mana source, but it's colorless, so it's not going to help you to find the right colors that you need. And then also four Felwer Stones. I think the Felwer Stones are really important here for multiple reasons, right? First of all, they're, of course, in there because you don't have the Mox into play. Remember, we're playing X points, so a Mox is also two points, and you can only spend 10 points in total. So it's going to be tough to play with all the Mox in any way in this format. Um, so they're uh, in there as a replacement for the Mox, but in a lot of cases, they can be actually better than a Mox in terms of color fixing because a Felwer Stone can make any type of mana that your opponent can. Now, remember... In uh, the old school format, a lot of decks play with City of Brass. So as soon as your opponent plays a City of Brass, that Felwer Stone can make any color of mana. It's like a super, super artifact, like like Mana Ramp, right? So the Felwer Stone can work really well. Of course, from time to time, you do play against decks that are mono-colored, and then they're just not as great for your color fixing. But still, in most situations, the uh, Felwer Stone will be able to make like two or even three colors of mana for you. So it, it, it's really good in the old school format. Then we see, of course, what the deck is famous for. So the deck wants to basically have the best answers, right, to threats. It doesn't necessarily want to have the best threats. It, it wants to have the best answers and it wants to have card advantage. So if we're looking at answers to threats, we see counter spells, swords to plowshares, Disenchants, we see lightning bolts. These are basically the best cards to answer threats. We even see a Blood Moon that he's playing main. And he can play the Blood Moon main because he's got so many basics in his deck, right? So that is really funny to see. Um, and then, of course, for the card advantage, he is playing with three Jam Day Tomes and two Disrupting Scepters, which is quite nice, right? So he's got the Scepters and the Tomes. With the Scepter, he can discard a card, and with the Tomes, he can draw a card. So that's pretty sweet. He is, by the way, playing with a proxy in this deck, and that is the Chaos Orb there that you see on the photo. So he's got, this is a uh, Confetti Orb that we got at a special draft that we both joined. It was a lot of fun. So he's playing with that um, Chaos Confetti Orb as a Chaos Orb. Is it called Chaos Confetti Orb or Confetti Orb or Confetti Chaos? I don't know. Anyway, that's the one proxy here in this uh, in this match. Um, and yeah, if we're looking at the threats, he's actually not playing with that many. Just one Sheevan Dragon and of course the Mistress Factories. And he can win with a huge Fireball. And that's exactly what the deck wants to do, right? The deck is usually not a deck with a lot of creature threats. It's It really operates from this, this philosophy of, okay, if I draw more cards than you... If I counter and destroy the biggest threats that you put on the table, I will eventually win the game. And guess what? That's correct. <laughs> it's correct. And that's, of course, why we see the deck win so many tournaments so often. 
But, you know, this version to me is really special because it is super budget friendly. You don't need a dual end for this. You don't need a power card for this. And yeah, I'm just curious to see how it's going to perform. I think it could work pretty well because, I mean, you've got the counter spells, you've got the swords, you've got the bolts, you've got the disenchants. Those are just great cards. They are one-on-one -on -one answers, right? But then with your card draw, you know, with, with the tomes, with the, with the well-timed brain geyser, I, I, I think I think it's good. I think it's a deck that you really have to know when to use your removal and how to use it. Uh, but if you do that well, I mean, yeah, it could work. I am really curious about the the mana base to see if that's going to work, you know, a mana base without duels. So that is a little bit risky, but I like it. You know, you got to try new things. So anyway, this is the deck on a budget. We already looked at my deck, Spy Stone, and that means we are ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we've got Yurian with his the deck on a budget sitting on the left, starting with the basic planes. And I'm playing with Spy Stone, so the deck built around Orkish Spy, Millstone, and Arborea, starting here with an Ivory Tower passing the turn. Okay, so that's pretty sweet. Here we see a counter spell drawn by Yurian. Does he have any islands though? That's a big question. And that's, of course, one of the things that I'm really curious about is, you know, how well is this deck going to function without the dual lands? And here we see me talking about dual lands. I'm playing a lot of duels in, in my deck. It's funny, like my opponent's on a budget, but I'm clearly not on a budget. Yeah. Having lots of duels in this deck, playing an Orcish Spy. That's, that's a budget-friendly card. So a card from Fallen Empire. It's one of the key cards in my deck, a 1-1. Tap and I can look at the top three cards of any deck and then I've got to put them back in order. Talking about budget here, <laughs> Ancestor Recall. Wow, this is a great start for me. Playing this on the end step of Yurian, meaning lots of life for me with the Ivory Tower. Yeah, this is this is a perfect opener for me and uh, it's going to be tough here for Yurian, going up to 25 already. And now what can I do? Playing out a Volcanic Island. Oh yeah, that's cool. So I could attack here with the Spy, of course. Or maybe I want to use it. Look in the future. First I'm going to cast something, it seems. Taika, Volcanic Island being tapped. Are we going to see a Millstone? No, we're going to see a Simbat. So this is kind of a cool uh, combo on board. And another Ivory Tower. Okay, wow. I'm going to gain so much life. So what's really cool here is I can use my Orcish Spy to see if I'm going to draw any lands. And if I draw a land, I can use the Simbat to draw it for free. So that's pretty sweet. And Yurian here playing some card advantage of himself as well. The Jam de Tome. Turn number four. Still hasn't found any blue mana, by the way. So the counter spell in his hand is pretty useless at the moment. But he does have a book, which is great for him. That's what the deck, of course, wants to do. So let's see if I gain some life. Two towers. And look at that. I'm going to go up in life totals. So I'm on 27. Using the Simbat, so I think I can stack it here in a way, so I'm kind of playing this wrong. Stack it in a way that that uh, card that I draw extra with the Simbat can also be added to the life gain of the Ivory Tower. So that's something to learn. It's a deck that I've, I haven't played with that often. But I have to say I like it. It's pretty cool. You just have a lot of lines you can follow. It's nice. Being here on 27... I wonder if I'm going to do something else. Just attacked Yurian here with the 1-1. One, one. So he's now on 19. Ooh, I'm going to do something. Tapping the duels here. What's going to happen? Oh, a channel. Do I have channel fireball already? That would be a quick ending of this game. And also Yurian has tapped out. So that's a perfect moment for it. Channel fireball is one of the win cons in the deck. But I mean... Oh, what am I doing? Taking 24 mana, I guess. 24 life gone. I'm on three. Wait a minute. Do oh, <laughs> oh, I've got mirror universe. I probably have a lightning bolt in hand. So my plan is next turn, switch life totals, bolt Yurian to death. But this is super risky. Remember, Yurian is playing the deck, right? He's got disenchants. He's got divine offering. I mean, this is risky. Oh no, oh no, so I'm praying there. There's the disenchant though. Mirror Universe is a goner. Oh god, oh god. I mean, I gotta I gotta respect myself here for, for trying to pull this off. If it would have worked, it would have been super cool. But um, yeah, not meant to be. Mirror Universe in, uh, in the graveyard here. 
using my Orcish Spy to check out the cards and do that little Simbad trick and hopefully the Ivory Towers will kind of get me back into it. it looks like I only have four in hand or not. So drawing card five, then drawing and go up to six. But still, I mean, I could have... Oh, because I cannot change the order, of course. Yeah, so I cannot, like, put the land card on top. Okay, so there's nothing I could have done here to gain life with the tower, I guess. But wow, I mean, I'm now really in the dumps. I was at the top, I was doing great, and now I'm at the dumps here, being on three. And remember, my opponent is playing and Lightning Bolt and Fireball. If he can just find the Lightning Bolt, I'm, I'm done. There's a Mishra's Factory. Can even be good as well to put some pressure on. Tapping four here for the book. My, 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 what a game this already is. Insane. Passing the turn here. Okay, finally gaining some life. Okay, now I want to order this the right way. So untap upkeep using Simbad. So I'm stacking it in a way exactly that now the ivory tower triggers. So I think I'm going to gain four life. Going to go up to seven. So, I mean, this is not a done deal yet. I can quickly get life back with the two towers and then try to rebuild. It is unfortunate, though, that I've already lost the channel and the, uh, the mirror universe. They're pretty important cards in my deck. But it is what it is. Tapping the Volcanic Island for another Orcish buy. Okay. That is pretty, pretty sweet. And it looks like I'm going to pass the turn here to Yurian. I'm on seven. What's that card? What's that? I can see it, but I can't see it. I believe in hand. We know he's got a counter spell. I think I saw a Swords earlier, and this could have been a Felwer Stone, perhaps. Not quite sure. There's an Island. Okay, finally found a blue source. There's also a red card in his uh, in his hand there. Okay, there's the Felwer. I think he just drew that. But, it, I mean, it's looking good for Yurian. I think his big problem, though, is those those double ivory towers for me. He's got he's to gotta find a way to, to deal with those. At least put some pressure on or else I'm going to get back up uh, to 20 in no time. Using the Orcish Spire on end step so I know where the lands are and when to activate Simba. Gaining some life again. Yeah, now it's going to go fast. Four life again, back up to 11. Remember, I was on three a few turns ago. Ooh, is that a fireball in hand of Yurian? Oh, 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 that fireball is super risky. Although I think I'm out of fireball range now with 11. Oh, but I dodged the bullet there. That fireball is so... I guess he just drew that one. That is super risky. <laughs> Playing a Bayou and tapping it to play out a Birds of Paradise. Yeah, exactly. Taking it back, realizing I need cards in hand for those double ivory towers i'm still you know pretty low up and i really want to take full advantage of the ivory towers here so there's a pass turn to yurian let's see what he can do i mean with the fireball i guess he could just kill all my one ones Ooh, there's a lightning bolt so maybe yeah it was a fireball right anyway choosing the first bolt the simbat that surprises me a little bit i, I feel like maybe he could have Firebolt a lot of my creatures, including the Simbad, but perhaps he wants to also use the book. That could be the reason. Tapping the City of Brass and the Felwer Stone, and four more. What are we going to see? Oh, Shivan Dragon! Oh, man, the one Shivan in the deck of Yurian. Look at that. This is a problem. Now I'm going to look at the top three cards here of, uh, of Yurian. Well, I mean, it's nice that I know what he's going to draw, but it's not really going to help me. Maybe I've got counter magic in hand and I want this information. And of course, I no longer have the Simbat. Anyway, gaining six life, that's pretty sweet. I mean, I could take a hit from the Sheevan, maybe even two, and I can chump block it with the, with the bird. So it's a huge problem, but I think I can still like stretch it to maybe three turns. Anyway, I'm on 17 at the moment. Let's see what I can do. Okay, tapping four. What are we going to see? Ooh, Arborea. This is really good. This is great timing. So Arborea, the card from Legends. 
And uh, it says, if you don't play a land or cast a spell, your opponent cannot attack you the following turn. So that means you're kind of free of attacks as long as you don't add anything to the board. So I can still use Millstone, for example, if it's on the board. I can still mill or use my Orcish Spy for that matter. That's, of course, why Arborea and Millstone is such a nice combination. But yeah, it's still a problem. And of course, Yuran can now still attack with the Sheevan Dragon. Ooh, he's tapping a lot. Oh, there's the Fireball. Killing all three little measly creatures. And the biggest problem here is that he's also killing the Birds of Paradise. I was kind of hoping to chum block here with the birds. But they're all toast now. They're all goners. So he's going to swing in with the Sheevan. Huge Flaming Dragon, and he's going to pump two mana into it. Seven damage. I'm going to drop to ten. Yurian taking a damage from his own City of Brass, dropping to 16. Wow, it's really not looking good for me. Although, although, I mean, I've got Arboria, and I've got double ivory towers. So I'm just going to, you know, sit back, gain a lot of life. There we go. Six life up, back to 16. Actually, there's not really a problem for me. Just pass the turn. Ah, and here I'm playing a land. I remember this. Uh, we made a little mistake. I thought I could still play out lands and Arborea would still work. I thought Arborea stopped working if you would cast something, but it's actually not true. Also, if you play a land, Arborea stops working. Fortunately enough, um, after this turn, we're going to find out. Because Yurian was like, I'm not quite sure if Arborea works that way. And then we got our phones out and we, and we figured it out. So it didn't have a huge effect on the game. But um, yeah, let's, let's, that, that moment is, I think, gonna gonna happen next turn, if I remember correctly. Anyway, first is Yurian's turn, so we're now both under the assumption that he cannot attack with the Shivan. So he's thinking, what else can he do? He cannot attack, but of course he can still use his Jemde Tome. He can play stuff out, like the Birds of Paradise. And I mean, I think I'm still in an okay position. I just gotta, you know, gain a lot of life with the towers and then find some millstones or something or some other way to regrowth. win this game although it's going to be really tough Ooh, regrowth on the fireball mm. that's not a nice idea knowing that my opponent has that fireball that is a little bit risky he's going to use the tome here he's going to draw a card for turn that's a disenchant okay so at a certain point you could start disenchanting the ivory towers Anyway, gaining life again, going up to 22. Yeah, and here I'm playing the Underground Sea, and now I think we have this moment of, hmm, does the card work this way? Yeah, exactly, I'm getting my phone out. <laughs> yeah, so what I did, uh, I cut a little bit in the video, so um, I'm just starting that turn again now. We now know that also when I play out a land, Arborea gets deactivated. So um, I've chosen to play out the Underground Sea. And tapping two Volcanic Islands here. So I wonder what I'm going to do. Because, I mean, I am going to take the damage here then from the Shiva next turn. Because he can attack with it. Okay, I'm playing out an Orcish Spy. Is that it? I'm on 22, I guess. So I could, I could take a hit from the Shiva. I know he's got a Fireball in hand as well. I have that information. So I'm a little bit surprised then that I'm doing this. I guess I don't want to discard, but it's better to discard and gain life than to take a huge hit. So let's see. Going through my hand again, I'm really in the tank here, trying to find a way out. Passing the turn, wow, okay. So I'm really opening myself up here, that's... Yeah, not smart. I wonder why I did this. Maybe it was because I felt like, yeah, I already played out the C and, you know, it happened and maybe that's it. Anyway, let's let's see what Yurian's going to do. He's going to draw a card here, a disenchant. Okay, another one. I mean, he can deal lots of damage here with the Sheevan. I mean, he's got two Fower Stones, City of Brass Mountains. He can deal nine with the Sheevan. He can also attack with the Mishra. And of course, the Birds of Paradise, they can deal 10, actually. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. 10 wow. points of damage. I'm dropping to 12. And, uh, I mean, I'm still alive. 
And I'm sure next turn I'm just gonna do nothing, gain life, and sit back. That's what I'm supposed. That's what I'm supposed to do in this situation. Look at that tapping two. Do I have double bolt? Oh, I'm trying to attack the life total of Yurian. Oh, now that is ballsy. That is ballsy. It's risky. Wow, putting him on nine. I I don't know if this is the, the right strategy here. Anyway, passing the turn. I'm not even killing the Shiva and I'm really hoping maybe I've got my Fireball in hand and hoping to win it here with Fireball. And if I have Fireball in hand, then I only need like one more Bolt, put him on six, and then I could kill him with the Fireball because I've got seven. Ooh, they're destroying the uh, Ivory Tower. Gaining a life in the process, of course, from the offering. So he's on 10. Oh man, the double bolt, that was really risky. And also, I, there was no reason to, to already do it. Again, I could have waited. It's an instant, you know? Anyway, what's done is done. He's going to draw a card here with the Gem de Tone. There's the Swords to Plowshares. Okay, I mean, I can live with that. That's okay. Going to quickly look at uh, the top three cards of my library. Going to go up to 13. I mean, at least I got to, to cast some, some Orcish Spies. It was fun. I'm on 14. Passing the turn back to Yurian, of course. Just doing nothing. Letting Arboria protect me here. But remember, Yurian also has the Fireball. I mean, I wonder if he's going to disenchant the last tower. Oh, this is bad. Disrupting Scepter. That is so annoying. That is so good now for Yurian. Losing one Arboria. Ay, 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 ay. I mean, it's, it's looking pretty bad for me now. Remember how I started this game. I gained so much life. I had that Ancestral Recall and then I chose to do Channel Mirror Universe. That's super risky play. And unfortunately, I didn't get rewarded for it. I have no regrets, by the way, of that play. Because if it would have worked, it would have been legendary. Anyway. Uh, there's a there's a GMD Tome. I mean, the most fun things to do in Magic are usually not the best things. You know what I mean? Anyway, if, uh, losing here to Forest. Gaining a life. So I am slowly going up still. And Arboria is really doing lots of work for me here. I'm now on 16. Ooh, and he's back on nine. Okay, so if I have a bolt and a fireball, I mean, I'm still hopeful here. Bolt and fireball, bolt and fireball. And I can still win this. But it's looking really good for Yurian. Yurian kind of doing the deck things, right? Drawing extra cards, using a scepter on me. You know, slowly uh, working on advancing his board state. And I mean, if he can just find another disenchant for my Arborea, you know, that would be really good for him. I mean, one could argue that maybe... Oh, playing a Volcanic. Okay, okay, okay. So Arborea is offline now. Playing a Fireball. Oh, Counterspell. Counter oh, countering the Counterspell. Oh, he can counter the counter the Counterspell. Oh, that is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. And I think here again, because now I'm playing the Fireball on the Shivan. I'm a little bit surprised with this move. Okay, he had a disenchant anyway, so I would have died, but... Yeah. I mean, I could have countered the disenchant instead, and I, I think I should play a little bit more reserved. Then again, if I would have countered the disenchant, the Arborea wouldn't have worked anymore because I would have done that in my own turn. Anyway, I would have died regardless. Game one is a goner, but it was a lot of fun, right? Let me know. Oh, yep, fireball there. I'm even dead already. I thought I maybe had an extra turn. Am I dead already? Counting. No, I'm not dead. Oh, I'm still on one. No problem. I got this. He's on eight. I'm on one. If I can do regrowth, fireball, nope, because he's on eight. Let's see what I can do. Tropical Island. I'm so dead. I thought it was dead already. Birds of Paradise. Okay, I can jump to Shivan with the birds. What else? Wheel of Fortune. Oh, that is funny. Okay, I'm on one. He stepped out. We're going to do Wheel of Fortune. We're going to do the dance. I don't really really think there's anything in there that can save me, but... 
Oh, this is a really cool game one. I'm really liking this. I mean, I've got a lot of question marks about my own decisions in this match, but I am liking it. There's another Birds of Paradise to chump the Sheevan. Oh, those poor birds. Those poor birds. Okay, there is a Sylvan and a Simbat. Okay, this is not too shabby. You know, I've got Sylvan Simbat. I can start drawing some cards, gaining some life with the uh, the tower. Who knows? I mean, he probably has a bolt here to kill me, but if not, he's on eight. Who knows? Drawing a card here. Probably going to use the scepter as well. Going to tap, pretty tap, tap some more stuff. Oh, there's a blood moon. This blood moon is so good against me. I mean, all those duels are now mountains. Oh man, that is not great. That is not great. Like blood moon is really not a card that I want to. I want to see. Oh, there's a bolt. So putting him on five, so I'm kind of doing my best here, but I think I've got three bolts in there now. I mean, the fireball is in there. There are three bolts in there. So in my deck, I've got one more bolt. And that's about it. So I need to try to deal damage with Simbat or something. I mean, that's a pretty ridiculous plan. Mirror Universe is gone, like... Plan A, B, C, and D are basically out of the window already. Is it? Does he have? Does he have a bolt in hand? Did I see a bolt in his hand? Is he? Nah, probably mistaken. I thought I saw a bolt in his hand. Then he can win the game. I'm on one. And he used the Simbat. Hey, there's a land on top. At least Simbat's doing work in this match. I'm still alive, which is kind of a miracle. Okay, there's a tropical island. Remember, they're all uh, mountains because of that blood moon. So probably have a lot of stuff in hand that cannot play out. I do, of course, have... Oh, he's going to bolt the bird. Oh, he wants to win in style. And I want to counter, but I can't because there's the blood moon. Why is this... There's a blood moon in play. I cannot counter this. How many beers did I have when I was playing this game? Come on, people. Oh man, sorry people, this is annoying here, these mistakes, but I still wanted to show you this game because it just, it's so much fun. Like we just did ridiculous things, so. It's so funny that we both don't notice that you cannot cast a counter spell right now because there's a blood moon on board. Ah well, it is what it is. I wonder what he wants to do now. Chicken? So I got a chump. I mean, it's clear that he wants to win with his Sheevan Dragon because basically he could have played his, his bolt on me and I would have died. He should have won now already, of course, because I couldn't I couldn't counter the um, the bolt because of the Blood Moon in play. Anyway. <laughs> Passing the turn. Now bring it on, Yurian. Kill me. You got game one, man. You've earned it. You should have won it last turn already. That's it. Winning game number one. And a big apology from me here for all those misplays and misinterpretations of cards in game one. I believe we did a lot better in game two. Anyway, we're going to shuffle up Check our sideboards and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. I'm on the play, of course, after losing that first game, starting with a Birds of Paradise, passing the turn, also a Birds by Yurian Sweet. We both have Birds. Let's see what's going to happen next. There's a Millstone and another Birds. For a moment there, I was hoping for an Orcish Spy, but another Birds, not too shabby. I'm not unhappy. I can start milling Yurian. And there he goes, tapping two. There's a Felwer Stone. Drawing a card for turn. Bayou. Tapping 
three, four, okay. What do I have for four? Let's see, okay, there's an Arborea. Okay, so I've got this Arborea millstone train going. That's pretty nice. Let's see if the uh, Arborea and the millstone can stick. Beauty on tapping five, the hive here. Oh, that is kind of annoying. The thing is with the hive, he can make one, one token. So I can like do nothing and he can just continue making tokens. The hive and Arborea is actually pretty nice as well. So I actually need that in my deck. Anyway, passing the turn here, not playing anything out. So the Arborea is working. He cannot attack me. And I can mill him, but I mean, this is really a long plan. And a risky one, right? Because in the meanwhile, he can work on his board or make 1-1 one, one flying tokens. And as soon as I play anything out, even a land, he can start attacking me. Just passing the turn for now, though. So that's good news for me. He's going to lose two cards. I'm going to take my turn. Let's see what I'm going to do. It looks like I'm just going to pass the turn on end step here. Yurian making a 1-1 one, one flyer. So that's, um, that's a little bit annoying. Like the, the, just not really happy with the situation here. <laughs> Cause yes, he cannot attack, but he's advancing his board and I am not, you know, that's, that's a problem here with Arborea and at a certain point, He's going to draw. Oh, there's the Sheevan again. The Sheevan's back. Oh, no. Remember, he's only playing one Sheevan in the deck. I feel, I feel like I'm in prison right now. I'm in my own prison because I, I cannot play out anything because then the Arborea doesn't work and he's going to just smack me in the face with a huge dragon. Uh, but in the meanwhile, he's advancing his board. He's probably going to draw into a disenchant sooner or later and, and, and then, you know, attack me with a huge army of 1-1 one, one wasps and a huge dragon. So this is just really a feel bad for me at the moment. There's a bolt, bolt the bird. And I guess I'm gonna use the mana here to, uh, to mill Yudian again, so. Milling two cards, okay, there's a disenchant. Okay, that's good news. Maybe, maybe I'm lucky. Maybe just gonna mill away all the disenchants and he's gonna die. It's very improbable, but who knows. There's also a, a, a factor of chance in this game, of course. So far, I feel I've been quite, well, in game two, I've been quite un unlucky. I cannot complain about game one after that sick opening that I had there. Playing an underground sea. Tapping two. Okay, copy artifact. But, oh, wait a minute, I'm playing Lance, doing stuff? There's a red Elemental Blast from the sideboard. Oh, this is bad news. Blue Elemental, okay, at least I'm Blue Elemental Blasting. I probably was planning on Blue Elemental Blasting to Sheev, and maybe I should. I, I, I'm really kind of doubting my place, to be honest, in this match so far. Anyway, protecting it, so I'm really going to go for the Millstone plan. Remember, Arborea is not working right now, so he's going to attack me here. I am still on 20 though, so I could take a hit, I guess. Or am I, okay, so I'm jumping and using the bird. Okay, so I'm jumping with the bird and milling for two. Ooh, look at that, he also boarded in the blue elemental blast, probably against the fireball. I mean, I was really close burning him out there in, uh, in game one. Oh, there's a recall. Oh, he's gonna get back the disenchant. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did the tapping right, unfortunately for me. Look at that disenchanting Arboria. I think this is going to be a short game number two, ladies and gentlemen. I need a little miracle here. I mean, I've got the two millstones. That's kind of cute, but it's not going to do anything. Okay. Maybe if I have a blue elemental blast and I can kill the Sheevan. Maybe. Passing the turn here to Yurian. The only silver lining here is that Yurian only has two cards in hand. That's something, I guess. But I mean, he can attack me here for lots of damage, playing a Fowerstone. 
He's probably going to, okay, swing in with the Wasp, not even animating the factory. Could have done that as well. Oh, look at that. Making the Shivan 10. So he's going to deal 11 damage, right? Dropping to 9. Oh, painful. Double milling him. He's going to lose four cards. Okay, that's something. Okay, that, that, that Blood Moon is important that that's gone. Oh, man, Blood Moon is such a killer. Maybe I need to play with uh, Nefneral's Discs in the sideboard or something. Okay, okay, I like this. This is good. But I think I'm dead, to be honest. So it's nice. Mirror Universe is cool, but I think I'm going to die. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, putting my hands up in the air and saying, nope. It's nothing I can do, but don't click away yet because we did play a game number three. Wow, this was uh, this was very one-sided here, Yurian. And it, yeah, that one Shivan, you see it a lot, man. I mean, that is tough for me to play against. I probably should have played the uh, the blue Elemental Blast on the Shivan Dragon there. That was a pretty big mistake. Anyway, you're winning game number two, but like I said, we did play game number three, so don't go anywhere. We're going to shuffle up and hopefully I can show you that Spy Stone can beat this, the deck, on a budget. Game number three, just for the funsies. Oh, look at that hand of Yuri on there. Lots of land. At least it's got the Blood Moon. Ooh, taking a double mulligan as well. I'm on the play, of course, after losing the both uh, the two previous games. So yeah. game three for the funsies, starting with a Birds of Paradise, passing the turn, an island. There's a pass. Let's see what I can do. I mean, I'm a little bit in the tank here, it seems. Okay. Playing out a spy, passing the turn. No land drop. Okay, that's unfortunate. Another island, passing the turn. Does he have counter magic in hand, perhaps? There's a forest. Attacking Yurian here, putting him on 19. Tapping two. What am I going to do here? Maybe millstone. Oh, a channel. Channel fireball. Oh, Channel Fireball. Is there going to be a counter spell? I mean, he's got two blue open. This is, again, super risky, but... No, he doesn't Doesn't have a counter spell. Oh, again, I took a huge risk there. I'm really... I'm a risk taker, man. I love it. Anyway, winning it here, game number three, which has nothing to do with my strategy whatsoever, but it does. it's kind of nice from time to time to win with Channel Fireball. It happens, you know, when you've got it in the deck, it happens. It's pretty cool. I don't play with Channel Fireball often, so this felt pretty great. Nice to at least win game number three here uh, with uh, Spy Stone. Here you can see my deck, by the way. And I've already had some people commenting on it with tips about how to improve it. And uh, one of the tips was a uh, Torment Script. I agree. I think that would work really well in this deck. And now uh, also, of course, let's take a look at the uh, winner of this uh, video. That's, of course, Yurian. Let's look at his deck, uh, the deck on a budget. And what I really like about this, Yurian, because we, we talked a little bit about your deck as well afterwards, is, you know, that you said that you don't have a lot of problems with the mana base, actually. That the mana base works pretty good. Of course, it depends on, on if your birds get to live, if your Felwer Stone is playing against a deck with, with City of Brass and stuff. But overall, you told me you didn't have that much trouble with the mana base. And... You know, the core of the deck, having those counter spells, the bolts, the disenchants, all those control elements that can fix problems that, that makes the deck so strong is in your deck as well. So it is, of course, a good deck and it's nice to see somebody trying to, to make the deck work with a limited budget. So I think it's really nice. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for bringing your deck here to the channel, to Timmy Talks. And of course, also thank you for being a patron of the show. Talking about that, if you would also like to play a game with me um probably not in the pub if you are uh, probably online but you know who knows maybe in the pub i would love to play in the pub uh but anyway you can check out patreon.com slash timmy talks for uh, for all the information and who knows uh what what will happen in the future maybe we'll play a game together as well make an episode together maybe you can play against uh, spy stone and show me some real magic uh man i made some i made some bad decisions in this episode but anyway enough about that thank you very much for watching before you go uh please take a moment like i said to check out my patreon page but you can also of course uh, like share and comment all these things uh, really help the channel move forward and they're really really appreciated so if you can take a moment please do this and also if you're not a subscriber yet please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell
Okay, thank you. And um, that's everything that I wanted to share with you. So that means we are ready. Let's go to the end scroll. Thank you to Samba Kazi.